All right, on the previous episode, we introduced the car and the project and the plans and then removed the engine and disassembled it. And we started inspecting all the good stuff, including the pistons that's going to be used. Check the block, it's quite okay. And now, here it is. Bored and honed to into 81.5 millimeter bore. And we assembled the crank and show you guys all the other things that we're going to do and did to this block. And of course, share some tips and tricks to do or that we're going to do to gain as much power as we can. Okay, here we are. We got the Arias pistons pressed into the factory B16 rods. We had it pressed in because the rods are not the floating type, right? Okay, here, we're gonna show you. Here's piston number one. Yeah, it's all ready. Okay, wait. We actually, let's, let's install the crank first. Okay, let's grab the main bearings. Here, oh wait, here, B16 main bearings. Let's go to the engine stand. Now here it is, all cleaned up and ready to go. Even the oil jets or the oil thrower is already installed after cleaning the block thoroughly. And we'll talk about that later. Yeah, all the bearing saddles are clean and good. So now here, we're going to install the main bearings. Right, I'm going to show you guys there. Okay, there we install it one by one carefully. Make sure it's properly aligned. This way you don't F up or bugger up the installation or the assembly. All right, just make sure it's just snug and fit properly. All right, yeah, okay, let's go speed this up because it's gonna take forever. Okay, so that's number two, it's getting good, yeah. Then number three, and then four and five. We always make sure this is clean. This way, it, the durability or the lifespan of the engine is really good, right? Okay, now we use the Torco assembly loop. Yeah, all right. Get some on each of the bearing halves before we put the crank. And then we put this again on the journals of the mains or the main journals of the crank. Sorry. All right, there you go. You can, you can put more. But the problem with that is it, will, it may start leaking towards the bore and you got to wipe it off. And we still wipe it off either way, just to be sure. All right. Now let's get the crank. Yep, slowly. All right, there. Okay. Make sure everything is good. There's no debris or no, you know, uh, cotton wool or whatever on the journals to make sure. Make sure it's clean. Okay, now we go put the thrust washers in. Okay, groove side out, okay? Has to be always groove side out, so make sure of that. And the main bearing clearances here, we shot for 0 0.0015 of an inch. So you can double check that with a plastic gauge, or if you have a micrometer like us, you can check that and then dial, get the dial bore gauge on the main tunnel. So this way, if you need to shoot for a certain clearance, you can take the crank to the machine shop and they can resize it for you. Yeah, and then here, sorry that we put the assembly loop and forgot to press the record on the camera or on the phone, so yep. But here you are, you can take a closer look. Yeah. Okay, now let's go get the main caps and get it ready, okay? We're gonna speed it up so that it doesn't get too boring, okay? time lapse this and it's gonna be all good and ready for the torque sequence right okay there you go just hand tight make sure they're all snug and then let's go to the torque wrench okay here we are now first step is 18 feet pounds torque all right let's go get it on the first step on each and of course we gotta time lapse the rest because hey you know it's gonna get 
a little bit boring on the video so it'll just be fast there you go all right right now the second final step is 56 feet pounds torque all right yeah i know i didn't put the pin on the rotator of the engine stand but hey this won't really fall anyway so here you go and then we get to the rest and of course we just time lapse so we're gonna finish it all right all right now here it is with the right clearances the crank spins freely actually even if it's uh, we use the assembly lube it's supposed to be a bit heavier because it's thick but you, as you can see it still spins lightly or spins freely that's gonna be good for making power and that's because it's going to be more efficient now let's head back to the desk here and show you the pistons because it's oem rods it's a pressed pin function instead of floating because the rod is the one that's holding the pin we do not or and you should not put the wrist pin locks because that will get pushed out and you'll start scraping your board and i've seen hundreds of those people posting they got a scored bore or you know scratched bore and that's no good and also one more thing because on startup this area here is all dry we lubricate it with assembly lubes this way on startup it goes freely because you see this uh this sledge here or the slit it only throws oil once it's running so on startup it's probably not throwing much oil so it needs to be pre-lubed so that you know it doesn't get scored up the yeah. and we're gonna show you the importance of that because we're gonna show you the used bearings of this engine wait up and we'll just do a time lapse of it so that we go you know disassemble all four really fast all the rod caps so that we can show you the bearings of how it is and we have something to show you and here you can see on the rod cap side of the bearing or the bearings on the rod cap side you can see there's some sort of an abnormal wear and let me show you closer i know instantly this has been rebuilt before but the problem is it wasn't rebuilt with you know clean enough it's probably just the bore or the block that wear was on initial startup it, why because if it was a normal wear or continuous these rod bearings would have been gone but it lived a long life so this scoring on the rod bearings came from the initial startup it could be a dirty oil pump or dirty block the oil passages you know and we're gonna show you the main bearings it's much the same this is why we made a video here is all about cleaning the block even the parts right before assembly that's how important that is because you can see here the bearings it it does damage the problem with this is that people never notice this because before they see it on the next rebuild they probably blew up their engine so there would there's a lot of other things to be to be blamed once the engine has blown up but we've opened a lot of engines after its lifespan for another rebuild and we would see this instantly we know it was lack of cleaning preparation that is why even real street jay meager made a really good video about it and of course our video is uh, will be on the description below or you can click here if you want but you know you gotta finish this video so it will be on the description below don't worry about it and even here we'll show you the main bearings or at least the rock, the main cap side you can see there's scoring marks right in the middle, right smack in the middle. That means the dirty oil or the oil that had dirty grime came from the block and the fuel pump. That, that means the block was not properly cleaned on the oil passageways causing this. So when you think about it, sure, it's not going to blow up, but this is definitely not fresh. And that, that could be robbing power because, you know, it's like you're trying to shoot for a proper oil clearances, but your bearings are this much or this way. That's kind of useless, right? So you got to watch the video on cleaning parts before the final assembly. That's very, very important.
And okay, before we go on, we've showed you this before and you gotta watch the how to clean video on parts before assembly because we remove this. This way you get to clean up the oil passageway that leads to the main bearings. This way if you got the if you had the head or the block resurfaced or honed and whatnot or machined with anything, that is gonna have some debris one way or another. And that's gonna cause that harsh wear during startup. So that's important. Okay, now let's go on. All right, now this is ready to have the rod bearings installed, but we're gonna do that right before we start installing the pistons. So yeah, now let's go on to the next subject. But wait, let's return all of this. So that we know we don't lose the bolts or have misplace it or change the order. All right, now these are ready to rock and roll. Well, you know, with piston rings and all that and installed in the crank. All right, yeah. Okay, now let's go to the block. Here's the block all cleaned up and machined. You can see it's bored and honed to 81.5. So it's ready. Here you can see the bore finish is really really good and we'll talk about the ring gaps the piston to walls on the next episode because we're going to install the pistons on the next one and you can see we decked it pretty good or had the machine shop deck it so that this way this is super flat for superior head gasket life all right and here you can see the block up close yeah it's gonna be really good. It's gonna be ready. So it came from this clean base of an engine or a block at the start before even the bearings got on. We made sure that it's clean through and through. And then of course, now it's this with the crank installed, ready and snug. And so the next is the oil pump. And of course, we'd like to talk about that in just a little bit. You can see the cross hatch is really good, right? It's 81.5, so it's still considered 1600. Yeah. All right. Anyways, like I said, you can click here or it will be in the description below uh, on how it blueprint and make sure the oil pump is functioning really good or properly. This way, you won't have any problems with oil pressures and running 5W30 weight oil or four or 10W40 weight oil is gonna be not a problem. And that's what we usually, we usually run. So, you know, it will be in the description below and that's gonna be for you to absorb all the information that we shared. And another thing for people that's keeping notes here, the main bearing clearance is 0 0.0015 and the rod bearings are 0 0.0018, the vintage. This way it's gonna be running really good and reliability is gonna be excellent. This is actually the same clearance as I did for Jasper or ECU Later's engine. That's been running for five years and being raced not a problem right and don't worry we will have in the description below a link to the playlist of all the shop work that we did so you know you're gonna like it and when the next episode is done of course you can click here for that